Today, we're sharing the best real estate apps to use for your business on the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here and now, and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling, and I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. And now, your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, hello and welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. This is episode 136. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, seems as though last week when we were closing the show, I said, my gosh, we haven't mentioned COVID one time in this episode. And we thought to ourselves, and I think we even said, hmm, let's not jinx, our, jinx ourselves. Huh, you have, a little, you have a little story you could tell us, Jan? Well, blame it all on you. Thank uh, you. Thank you for that, because you did jinx the whole, what was it? I did. You jinxed uh, something we were talking about before, baseball, or I can't even remember what that yeah. was. Oh, yeah, it was baseball before. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So, yeah. So, first of all, situation's reversed. I'm uh, recording, or live slash recording. I'm in the Georgia area, Canton, Georgia, at my sister's beautiful home. And it's awesome, and we had a little scare because um, a member of my family tested positive for COVID-19 um, on Monday, and as we record this, and it's now Friday, so four, four or five days ago. And we were around him for like an hour. We were outside, but we weren't wearing masks. And so we went ahead and took tests. My sister, my brother-in-law and I took, uh, we were hanging out in an outdoor area, like I said, um, I didn't. I haven't had any symptoms or anything. The only symptoms he had, by the way, was the no smell. He actually felt um, on Saturday didn't have any symptoms. On Sunday, he was feeling uh, runny, not runny nose, like he had a sore throat, a little coughing, and then he didn't have the smell. And the whole thing about the smell and taste made him think, oh, okay, no smell, no taste. That's definitely one of the symptoms of COVID. So he went and had a test on Monday. He got the result. Uh, uh, the results on Tuesday and uh, it was positive so we went and had tests yesterday and, and, and as we you know and here's where the confusion there's so much confusion and so much information out there Matt that you know we I've been watching all of that but when you think that you might have COVID or you've been exposed to somebody with COVID then definitely you're starting to look at the CDC website and so forth and we're checking in with doctors and we have doctor in the family and all that and you know, and there's all this differentiating. Uh, my sister works for a pediatrician's office, so there's all kinds of guidelines to say if you don't have any symptoms, you ought to wait for five or six days, then maybe go get a test. Um, so we looked this all up. I was able to go through the CVS drive-through, but we did it on the fourth day, and so now I'm wondering. And it came. And good news, it came back negative today. Yeah, I was going to say, give the good news. <laughs> it's a punchline. I'm currently negative for COVID, but my concern is, you know. Did we give it enough time to incubate? You know, is it possible? Can I be asymptomatic? And so what I've decided to do is I was supposed to fly home yesterday from Atlanta to Vegas, which would have been Thursday. And when we found this out on, on Tuesday, we, I just decided, obviously I can't fly. Don't know what's going on. I'm not gonna be the responsible. I'm certainly gonna do what you're supposed to do, which is to uh, self quarantine until you can get a test. So that's what we've been doing. But I just decided to extend my trip and, and do that 14 day self quarantine because first of all, I can work remotely, right? That's the beautiful thing about what we're doing these days is in, uh, let's face it, it's a little cooler here than it is in Vegas. Uh, I get to stay in this beautiful house and it's all good. But I do think I'm gonna take another test just to be sure before I get on that airplane next week. Um, so it's been um, slightly stressful. I've been feeling like I'm fine, I feel fine, you know, so I wasn't really overly concerned. But man, when you really get into that situation, it makes you stop and go, okay, seriously, my sister and I have been sitting talking about, I've visited two states now on this trip and <laughs> Nevada, they're both a lot more lax in the mask wearing department. Uh -huh, definitely. Florida was better than Georgia overall, I'll have to say. And it has a lot to do with, with um, the, you know, the governor in Nevada mandated masks, so people were complying. Florida, Georgia did not, but I, I, I've been in different areas and I just kept my distance and I was with my other sister who's got pre-existing conditions and 
we were, you know, secure. My sister here really follows all the same guidelines, but you can't help what everybody else is doing around you. And I've been a little bit like, wow, the difference between Nevada and here with people not wearing masks, they have to wear masks going to the grocery stores and all that. But I, I just noted, noticed a huge difference between no mask, no entry, like all over the place in Nevada. And here, very, you know, keep your distance, but not a lot of talk about masks. It's like every business will have, you know, keep your distance. We follow social guidelines, uh, social distancing guidelines, and the, the, the uh, restaurants and stuff are spread out. And it does say you got to put a mask on to go to the grocery stores, but that's the extent of it. And well, you know, it's all going to be interesting. Thank you. Thank you, Jan O'Brien, for that update on that. I'm glad you're doing well. And, you know, also thank you for being a uh, safe and, a, and a positive role model and a patriotic American. Thank you very much for that. And I'll tell you, listeners out there, you know, we will go to great lengths to make sure we're giving you up to date, <laughs> real time information on what's going on in the world. So see, we'll even get even try to get COVID for you so we can walk you through the process. Here's where we've had this situation where it's like my sister and I have sat down and said, you know, you, you can't be nonchalant. We can't let our guard down. I think you have to be aware. I, I don't think we all have to lock ourselves in our houses and so forth, but you can do the simple things like washing your hands, right. and not to touch your face. I mean, really, right? Like as yep. I face right now. Uh, right. So anyway, it, it's an interesting. And so we'll give you an update next week. I feel pretty confident um, it'll be negative and I'm hopefully with my sister and brother-in-law as well. And my nephew is feeling fine. He's, his wife's getting tested now and uh, waiting to get her test results. So um, there it is. That's all. Well, good. Like I said, stay safe. And you are, I, I, you know, it's it's just so interesting that you always, you hear, we've been hearing about this for six months and now you're experiencing it. So it's really uh, interesting uh, to be that close, you know, one degree of separation away from COVID. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Moving on to our topic of the day, we're, we're going to continue our team success uh, series. And today, I know we, we talked about this uh, the last couple episodes where we were going through the must-have list, you know, the apps that you need for your business. So, Jana Bryan, what's on the what's on the plate for today? Well, that uh, I went through and took a, took a look at the apps that I'm using because I started to realize when we're doing this team series that we're using several uh, tools that have app versions that allow us to stay in touch as a team. But I wanted to just start from anybody, whether you're a team or just an individual, kind of in a bit of a priority order, what I think is critical for you to consider that you you're probably have most of these apps already. But why don't we just run through them and over in our show notes for episode 136, there's a detailed list of them with links to where you can go get them if you don't already have them. And the first one that I use most of the time right now is MLS Touch, which goes with Matrix. So if you're a Matrix user, you probably have MLS Touch. If you don't, I bet your local MLS, whatever you're using for your local MLS, I'm sure has a mobile edition. Now, why this is so powerful is it's an app version because if you're out in the field and you're showing homes, you can pull properties up, you can do everything that you can do as a realtor. You can pull up listings, you can get comps, you can get information on solds. Um, you know, you can see your listings, all that great stuff, hot sheets. You can even share your listings on Facebook. It's very, very powerful. The best part, of course, is that you can brand and share your app to give to a client. That's awesome. The MLS client app. So you can go in, use it just like you would in the field, and then you go in and uh, create, add your company logo, get your colors, and then it has a way for you to share via text message or email right in the app. You send it to your clients. We have everybody on our team is using this now and have their clients, uh, uh, they can see. So it ties to your matrix contacts or prospects if you're using the prospects uh, uh, CRM that some of the MLSs have. I don't use that, but you know it's in your matrix that you can see. And they can text you inside the app and tell you, hey, I want to look at this property or send you messages and so forth. So it's very cool. It's pretty wild, you know, that, that, you know, early adopters to that kind of technology years and years and years ago, you know, you'd pay big money for that kind of thing. And now what was it? What's the cost of this app, Jan? Uh, that would be, it comes with your MLS dues. That's right. Well, okay. So there is a cost to it, but you know, if you utilize it, right. So 
So uh, the next couple I'm going to talk about are tied to your to your MLS to being a realtor and uh, probably tied to your um, MLS. Your MLS may have these for you. We use in Nevada Center Key Central Lock. Now that that is the coolest thing. I've been you know in real estate since 1990 back in 1992, and we certainly didn't have apps for that. We had old key box, you know, 20, 20th century boxes. Hmm, right. 20th century, right. Exactly. So this is even a, this app is cool for being able, obviously it's the app we use to open up lock boxes, but you can also get property details and showings and it assigns your lock boxes. So that's a given if you're having that. I mean, that's, it's almost like you have to have it, but I got to mention it because it's cool. It has some other things that you can do like grant one day codes. Showing time, there's a lot of people that don't like showing time. Showing time, I have, I have come to like. So when you list a property, you can use showing time. You can tell agents, hey, you've got to go into the showing time app to schedule your showings, especially now during the COVID stuff. Yeah. Um, I like it because it lets you as a listing agent see when uh, with the key box too, with the central lock, you, you can see when people are entering and exiting your property um, and the showing time will let you schedule, uh, you know, confirm showings get activity on your listing. And then if you're the agent, the buyer's agent, you just go into your app or even through the MLS, but you can do it through your app and request a showing. And then the agent gets a notification and then confirms it. And so I think for an agent, a listing agent, it's very good to be able to know who's been in the property and to, and to um, schedule. Cool. Okay. Um, the next one is called RPR mobile. We have this through our MLS and I have a link to just the national, this is a national association of realtors. You know, I just recently discovered the power of RPR because of some cool things we're doing on our team with seller lead generation. One of the things we're doing is running lead, uh, running ads, Facebook ads for sellers to get information on the value of their home. And I've decided instead of running a quick CMA, I go into RPR and I can do this on the mobile app also. And I can I can pull up the person's address, get all the, get like a 30, 40 page report. PDF, a listing report, uh, a property report, a buyer report. They have like five, six different reports that you can send through the app, through the desktop application also, um, that just is super professional. You go in, you set up all your stuff. It also allows you to search properties. So, I mean, I would use MLS Touch app, but it's really cool. I've been out here in Florida and in Georgia, and I can go into my RPR app and pull up information on this neighborhood my sister lives. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it so makes you very much more mobile. I totally recommend that RPR one as well. Next, when we talk about functionality of working, you've got to have a digital signatures application, an e-signature. Now, it, you may probably have access if your company is using a paperless system like Dot Loop or, or um, we use Skyslope and it has, it has a DigiSign feature that you can use, but it's tied to your paperless transaction. So if you have the need to be able to send other documents that aren't related to a transaction that you don't need to have in your brokerage, then you might want to consider something like obviously DocuSign. Everybody's heard about DocuSign. Um, it's $10 a month for five docs, but there is an NAR benefit. It's generally $25 a month, but you can get um, DocuSign for $20 a month because you're a National Association of Realtor member. And that lets you do everything. Now, Matt, you've used the other one. I didn't put it in our notes, but we could add it. If you have Adobe Premium, right, you can do digital signatures with that. But yeah, you, you can, but it's not exactly the same. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that as much, especially for real estate transactions, because it doesn't time stamp it like uh, the same way that DocuSign does. So I would stick with the DocuSign if you're going to do something when you're real estate transacting, just because it's it's more uh, documented. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. And then um, I just recently discovered, Matt, I don't know if you know about it, but I'm, I'm a, you know, we're big Drive users and Google Drive and then kind of rediscovered Dropbox. Dropbox, I think, is maybe in realizing they need to keep up with everything from Evernote to Drive to the Microsoft stuff that's come out for cloud storage and more. So they have something called Hello Sign. So I've used this for my coaching clients. So I was able to, you can do three documents a month for free. It's if you go into your Dropbox, and it might be just for Dropbox Premium, which we have. Right. Uh, and I kind of like the new design of Dropbox. I don't like it as much as uh, Drive for for collaborating, but for storage, I like Dropbox still. But anyway, this Hello Sign worked awesome. It's super easy to use, and if you're going to do more than three documents, I think it only costs. Let me see my notes here. It only costs thirteen dollars a month 
you get unlimited documents. Okay, and that's tied and it, and it, and it stores it in your Dropbox the folder in your Dropbox. Cool. So, you need a digital e signature tool for sure. <clears throat> now, if you're whatever CRM you're using needs to have a mobile app, we use KB Core. KB Core has a great mobile app, which is a kind of baby version of all the things KB Core can do. But what's awesome about it in the field is it not only allows you to access your database, uh, call people, it's a dialer. You can actually, if it says, hey, you have 10 calls to make, I can go into my app and it will just start, it will list everything and I can hit dial and it'll That's start. That's pretty cool. It'll start dialing all the people I need to make phone calls to. And what's great about that, especially if you're managing a team, is if you're having everyone use the CRM to keep their notes and to call or text or email from there, you have the paper trail of accountability of connections. But if they're using the app, it also records into the CRM. You know, I call the per, you know, call this person and talk for five minutes. You know, it, it, it says all that because it's all integrated into the app. So I totally love that. Uh, you know, on our on our CRM, we can get that. We can uh, do tasks um, and get access to all the listings in the MLS as well as our own listings. Be able to share with clients and so forth. The next one is an open house app. And again, your MLS, your KB Core, if you have another system like that, has an, a, you know, a open house app, which is very good. So it's not any additional cost. Um, I love that app. Of course, right now we're not doing open houses, but when we get back to doing open houses, the app is awesome because if you get this or the other one, if you don't have one with your CRM solution, then take a look at Open Home Pro. It does cost $25 a month though. Unless, again, a lot of times, if you're listening from other parts of the country, check with your MLS, your Realtor Association. Sometimes they offer all kinds of different tools, or your company might have a tool. But Open Hope Pro, I've used before. They used to have a free version. Now it's $25 a month. So Core uh, Open House we love because it allows you to have people come into your open house instead of doing a registration sheet. They, you give them the iPad. They sign in. It sends them information about the property they're viewing, and then you're able to um, – you know, follow up with them, right? All right, next on my list is title company apps. Now, they, every title company out there has some kind of app, and there's two things in particular that you'd want this for. Most importantly, you want a closing cost, a net sheet app, okay? This is what everybody's gone to. You know, I'm still old school, Matt, and I like to whip out a net sheet and knock it out. Sure. Or I do like to use the ability to be mobile and pull something out and open it up and be able to show a buyer what their costs are going to be, what their their uh, mortgage payment's going to be. They have mortgage calculators in them. So I have a link in the show notes to things. Uh, Fidelity. Fidelity is this family of companies like Chicago. It's all the same app. It's it, right. Fidelity. So it's Fidelity Agent and this closing cost. Fidelity One is what it's called. Uh, Fidelity, my first am, has kind of a first American title has a combined app that has all that in it, plus all the farming and property searches. And that would be the other thing that you would want. Fidelity has something called Total Farm. It's so amazing what you can do now. So you get this app, you, and, you, and I put in the notes, you need to contact your marketing rep because there's some costs for some of these if you just go looking for them, but you can generally get it from your title company. But you can do farming reports, pull data, get CSV files, all the things that you need to do to, to create walking farms when you're, when you're prospecting and so forth. So check with your title company. I'm sure they have a great app. And you know what, you probably know they have apps and you haven't used them yet. And I'm just suggesting that it's gonna make your life easier. That's sure. If you're trying to do a, a net sheet on the fly, okay? Um, cloud storage, I just mentioned it a second ago. My recommendations in order, Google, and I use all of these, Google Drive, Dropbox, and iCloud. I use them all, I'm a Mac user, so I have certain things on iCloud. The, the main thing I wanted to share here, why do you need cloud storage? Well, even though you're using most likely a paperless transaction management system in your company, you know, you may not stay in the same company. Okay. You, you, something can happen. Always. I think you need to have backups. So you may give your company the specific documents you need, but you have got so many other notes and things that you've done. I always recommend it as a broker that you turn all that stuff into your, uh, your company management system anyway, but I recommend using drive or Dropbox to have transaction folders for, you know, and manage them that way. And I put a little note in here and it, it's come handy to me because I was doing it the wrong way. I was always naming my files, one, two, three, Elm Street, purchase agreement. Mm -hmm. So especially in the app versions of this, always name your document, what the document is first and then the person's name or the address to keep it organized. But you can set up a whole folder structure 
for your buyers and sellers from b before, during, and after, right? That's what we teach and coach at WBNL Coaching, all the things you're doing with the people beforehand, during the transaction, and after, and you can have all the, it's more than just the paperwork that they sign. Well, hey, and it helps you out. You know, one of our um, best marketing tips of the year is that uh, the uh, sending the, your past clients their um, closing their closing uh, um, uh, form at the beginning of the year. So you know, it's going to be handy. You're going to have it right there, and you can just send it on out. So yeah, it's just enough to have. Example of a of a great way to do it. So this is where you collaborate and share documents and put things in your folder, that, so you don't have to go looking for right. It. Or you have to call their company and say, hey, can I get a copy of that? Or go back into the system and try to get it out. It's just easier for you. All right. There's a power tip from Matt. We're coming up on that anyway. You be, That's right. And if you haven't been doing it already in all your closings, and boy, I need to go do that myself. You go put them all in. Thank you. I have that to do myself. I'm going to remind my team of that, that they should go do that now. And I should be doing it all along. So the whole process to that is you have a closing. You get the you get the closing uh, deal that gets uploaded to your paperless thing. Just grab your closing statement and go put it in a folder called closing statements for right. 2020. Then you're able to have the letter that you send out and it's a great touch for your database in January. Awesome. I thank you, Matt. And we're going to, that's going to be my power tip uh, this week. My pleasure. All right. Let me go into a couple premium apps. Um, first of all, zoom. Hello. Got to have the zoom app on your, on your phone or your iPad. Uh, you, you can do Zoom free, but I recommend highly the $14.99 a month so that you have a little bit more ability to record and do other things and longer amount of people. More time, yeah. The time thing is important. And how many people can join you and so forth. If you're going to do webinars and trainings and so forth, so you need to have Zoom. Canva, Matt's favorite product. Canva's app is really cool. I don't know if you have the app on your phone. or I do. I mean, you can go in on the fly, create some graphics or little things that you need to do right there, access all your folders right from your phone, right? Um, so I love that. I love BombBomb's app. Um, now, again, I, I'm, you know, I'm a, I, I can't help it, but I'm a fan of KB Core, okay? So KB Core did a deal with BombBomb, and now they have something called Core Video. It's actually, it's an add-on for my KB Core, but it's cheaper than having the BombBomb, which I had before. But I got to tell you what's powerful about having the app for bomb bomb or as like I have on my phone, my can go into KB Core and record a, a video right from my KB Core app. But the bomb bomb app lets you do that. You can access your library, your templates, your emails, or on the fly, you can record a video and send it out or text it out. You can send a video, text, or an email from your phone to your customers. Absolutely love it. Something I haven't tried that keeps coming up every time I turn around or I'm in any kind of conference is Box Brownie. Boxbrownie.com is an Australian-based company, but it is a wicked cool app for photography, and they have real estate-specific stuff. It, it's really? definitely premium. So what you can do is professional photo editing. Now, generally, you're going to have a photographer doing all this for you, but if you're into wanting to do things with your own photos, check out Box Brownie. You can take a photo that you took, and then you can do put different things on it. To, there's tons of apps where you can put filters, but this is designed for professional oh, yeah and it has a real estate area huh. and it's like a one-off it might cost a dollar sixty a photo to put professional features on it lighting and some of the stuff that your professional photographers do for you you huh. can also do virtual staging with this app you can remove things so if you had a picture in a of a property that you wanted to use but there was just really like a pile of boxes or stuff you can remove them it can also let you do floor plan renderings. And these are all a la carte sort of pricing of what you have to do. But just go to boxbrownie.com, check it out. It keeps coming up in everything. Um, I was in an Inman thing in the, earlier in the year, and many agents were talking about they use Box Brownie, right? Interesting. And you know that that's going to be reproduced a thousand times, and it'll get cheaper and better as time goes on. So that's fascinating. That's What a great tool. Uh, another premium one that I use a lot is, because I'm a fan of Keeping Current Matters, There, there are. this is a premium fee you either pay 25 a month or 29 a month or 40 a month i'm on the 40 a month because i want the videos but keeping current matters gives you daily blog posts very timely about the market about i mean that great things to share with your clients we put them on our blog we so we put them on social media we have that it gives us infographics the upgrade to 40 lets you have social graphics that you can you can brand that you can put on instagram linkedin and facebook and it also does what I love about it. I love all of that, but then the extra value that I love that comes in the first level is the monthly national housing reports. And I use those every month. I've done about five now. I think I'm on my fifth or sixth 
market report where I listen to what they say. I listen to you know their daily stuff anyway, but they put a great report together geared to you as an agent. So you can turn around and take what information you want and then do your own report for your clients. And that's what I do. I take some of their slides so I can talk about what's happened nationally, what's going on with the economy. And then I go put in our local uh, statistics for our local market and I record a video and we put it in our newsletter every month. That's great. That's that right there is the source of a lot of my content for my newsletter is my KCM is what the app is called. And the, when you get in there, so keeping current matters. And then last document sharing. So being on the road has made me realize I needed, I, did, I didn't have access to a printer here mm. or a scanner. So I researched some scanning apps for your phone on the fly. And the first thing I realized is I, ha I can use Evernote. I'm an Evernote user. I have Evernote Premium. So there is a scannable app for Evernote. And it's built into the Evernote Premium, I think. I'm trying to figure that out. I was trying to figure this out because I really needed to be able to scan something. Um, but the others I found in my research that I put the links to are called uh, Cam Scanner. There is a free version of that, but it puts a little watermark on it. And then, you know, they, but it's an app. So I think that one's like $199, $699 for Scanner Pro, something like that. But go check them out. Scanner Pro, Turbo Scan Pro. All you do is put it on. But here's what's cool about it. You don't, you might need to scan a document because you're just out in the field and you're not by something or you're on vacation or whatever. You don't have to run to a, I sort of say Kinko's. I don't even think there's any Kinko's running. It's, oh, no, it's FedEx Kinko's now. So you're still there. Oh, that's what it is. Office. Yeah. Office Depot, or you don't have access to it. You can scan a document and send it, but you can also do things like scan your receipts and the app organizes it all. The best cool. part about most of these apps, well, obviously the one for Evernote would store it, but they generally have in the paid versions, the ability to put it to Drive, put it to Dropbox, right. share it in your cloud storage. So now you can be so organized with your receipts for your taxes to whatever you need to be doing. Uh, on scanning documents, and so me, I'll be using Evernote, but there's a couple others in case you're not an Evernote user. So there you, you know, go. Hey, hey, General Brain, before you you close on that, I want to give another another little pro tip on this. I've heard you say many times, and you were going through these uh, things that you have the premium version of these uh, things. So you need to make sure that when you are actually adding these apps, and if, if you are getting into a paid subscription and this stuff, that you add that to your business plan on your marketing page, so you know exactly where all your costs are for for the year. Because every year, Jan and I talk about this all the time that when you yeah. Go and your your business planning for the following year. You need to go back through, and you need to make sure you're still you're using your money wisely, right? And so, if you're going back through your your plan from the previous year, and you haven't used some of these apps, or you haven't used the premium version, downgrade, save some money. So keep track of that. It's so important to know what you're spending your money on in your business. Yeah, totally true. Uh, I'm I'm in the process of doing that now for tax, getting pre pre prepared. Right. For and so forth. And I'm telling you, it's like, oh my God, I forgot I was doing that. And this is where you clean house, right? Sure, exactly. I also but, and, and our, hey, our business plan template that we have is a perfect place to house that kind of thing. I mean, that's the, that is why this all this stuff just comes together, right? That's why you have to have the foundation. You have to have the tools and systems in place. It makes you more efficient and you can save money and make a lot more money along the way. All right, so there, there it is, folks. Uh, I pretty much use all of those, but about, you know, I mentioned some other variations of stuff, but I have, I'm using pretty much all of those things other than, well, I'm using the Evernote scan now because I had a need for it. But yeah, I mean, this is how you can be efficient and be on the road, be remote, uh, you know, be out in the field and, and take care of everything that you need to do in your business. Good stuff. Hmm. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Well, that's a wrap for episode 136 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. You can get all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jan O'Brien, I knew the app version or the app episode here was going to be great. You shared a lot of really, really great information in there that I bet you a lot of people are not using. I bet, I bet everybody that's listening can say, well, there's three or four on there that they're definitely using. But hopefully we enlighten you to things that you could consider. Because isn't it all about just making things easier and not being stressed? And yeah. There may be a little bit of a learning curve to certain things. And, you know, we're way past now with the mobile phones. You know, remember in the beginning where we downloaded everything and then you realized you didn't use half of it? Yeah. We recently got the iOS 14 upgrade. 
and I love it. It made me look at the apps that I want to use because it's super organizing for you with stacking your stuff up and it makes the apps that you, it's so intuitive. It's really getting a little scary. I know. Software to say, well, you use this a lot, so we're going to make this bigger so you can see it. And I'm like, wow, this is what we're going to, all this AI, all this tracking of your behaviors so that they can give you a give you a good I'm trying to be like positive about this because I to this day don't think I'm ever going to have one of those um, Amazon or Google things in my house you know no, like, I know no Alexa for me either I think it's kind of cool to go you know Alexa play this or play that and I'm like it's just totally okay I have a story on that okay <laughs> You know, I do. I don't want to be a conspiracy person, but I think I think it's a little scary. I'm just like, I mean, they already hey, doing it now on the phone. What the hell? Maybe I'll hey, just. That's, well, that's true too. Hey, take the whole uh, uh, intrusion, uh, the security intrusion out of it. A friend of mine the other day <laughs> said that he uh, we had a little earthquake. It was a 5.0 earthquake that happened here in LA. It was last weekend, like Saturday night or Sunday night. And up in LA where he lives, the, he lost power for a little bit. When we lost power, he lost the Alexa, his Alexa in his bedroom, and he uses and his lights are hooked up to Alexa. So usually he's just like Alexa, turn on my lights, right? So when the <laughs> he couldn't turn the lights on. And I, because when it came back up, she didn't connect because the wire, the internet was down. And I said, so couldn't you just get your ass out of bed and go turn the light on? He goes, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not used to doing that now. It was so hard. I'm like, oh my God. Turn on the lights. I know, what the hell? So anyway, I thought that was pretty. Every time I hear that, I think how cool it's just like Star Trek computer. Yeah. We'll know we're, we're there when you can go computer a cup of Earl Grey tea makes it for you. <laughs> I know. I know we're not quite the Jetsons yet. Almost. All right. All good. Anyway, well, glad, Jan O'Brien, once again, I'm glad you are uh, feeling good, that you have tested negative so far, and you're being safe and sane and positive and doing the right thing. So, you know, like I said, you're in such a beautiful place right now. You might as well enjoy this. This is like a little extra add-on to your, your uh, time away. So that's fantastic. Yep, getting, being very productive, getting a lot done, getting, uh, feeling positive. It's a, it's an opportunity to, to, you know, everything is about mindset, right? So even if you go through something like a bit of a scare, just take the right measures, do what you need to do, stay positive, you know, um, and everything's going to be all right. We're going to be okay. We are going to be okay. All right. Well, that's it. That's going to do it for this, this week. You know, everyone, as we always say, get up, get out, be safe, mask up and be forever wandering, but not lost. Mm -hmm.